I think that all online teachers should seek out professional development. Then my why quickly became something that I could roll my experiences into at the same time as having the flexibility of being a stay-at-home mom because teaching online is such a flexible job. I would love to see more formal international accreditation of certification courses. Like right now, you know, any Tom, Dick and Harry can put out a TESOL course or a TEFL course and you don't really know the quality of one from another. And also maybe one day to have a team of more than one. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this is. This is a job recruitment podcast. That's Please right. <laughs> join in <laughs> Crystal's mission. Hello and welcome to the Qualified Tutor Podcast, the podcast that brings you the latest in the world of tutoring, edtech and education, and hopefully inspires in you the big change that each and every one of us is capable of. Qualified Tutor is an industry-leading tutor training organisation and online tutoring community for thousands of tutors around the world. This podcast is the voice of this community, where we aim to hear from tutors, teachers, entrepreneurs, coaches, business experts, students, tutorpreneurs, and more from the world of tutoring about what inspires them every day, how they can help tutors like you, and what they've learned about tutoring along the way. The question is, what will you learn today? Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Qualified Tutor Podcast. I am delighted to welcome on Crystal Weber today. So um, welcome, Crystal. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Thanks for having me, Ludo. I'm really excited to be here. Wonderful. Yeah, so I am delighted to welcome Crystal Weber on to the podcast today because Crystal has so much to, to talk to us about and so much experience to teach fellow tutors out there, especially um, experience of, of the online tutoring world and the online English as a second language world. Um, so Crystal is the founder and managing director of Crystal Clear ESL, which provides, I'm going to be honest, a beautifully designed, um, carefully curated uh, ESL curricula to help uh, online ESL tutors around the world. Now, before you ask, where do I sign up? which I know is the next question, you listeners, we need to explain ESL a little further. For those of you who don't know, um, as I just mentioned, ESL stands for English as a second language. Um, it's a little like EFL, English as a foreign language, except that ESL students are typically already within an English-speaking country and wish to therefore learn the, the, the local language, which is English. Now, Crystal has been in this space for a long, long time and... Once lockdown hit, like so many other amazing tutors out there, immediately spotted a gap in the market for the thousands of ESL educators across the world, and so set about filling that gap. In fact, Crystal went much further than simply filling it. Um, Crystal has led hundreds of online educators through their first steps into ESL teaching. Let's see how. Now, just before we start, Crystal, you're based in Southampton, UK. I am, yeah, but it's not where I'm sort of born and bred. I'm originally Canadian from British Columbia, a little uh, town in the interior of BC called Kamloops, and I'm a long way from home now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, your husband and I, I believe, have swapped countries, actually. Yes, you we? have. Yeah, yeah, he's from uh, near Frankfurt, and I think you're in Berlin? I uh, currently in Berlin, yes. Yeah. So there's just a little, a little exchange that's gone on there. Um, that's amazing. I mean, that just demonstrates doesn't it? Straight off how adept you are at understanding different, different countries, different cultures, different languages, you know, German husband living in the UK now from America. That's, that's a really, a very, very good spread. Um, yeah. So wonderful. Yeah. Let us dive in, Crystal, into our first question. I know you are dying to get to this first question. What is your why as a tutor, Crystal? 
Well, uh, my why is a really an evolving why. So I started out as a tutor over 15 years ago when I traveled to Japan to teach um, English to preschoolers and elementary age children, where I actually met my husband <laughs> to add <laughs> there some we go. intrigue there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so that at that point, my why was literally just traveling and seeing the world and broadening my own horizons, which then evolved into um, a love of teaching. So I went to university when I started living in the UK and had um, got my QTS, qualified teacher status, taught English in secondary schools for about five years, and then decided to take a career break to have kids. So you roll on another sort of five, six, seven years, and the online ESL industry is coming, blossoming. And then my why quickly became something that I could roll my experiences into at the same time as having the flexibility of being a stay-at-home mom, because teaching online is such a flexible job. So then the pandemic hit and sort of everything exploded. My husband sadly lost his executive job right at the beginning, uh, April 2020. And my why quickly changed to, (laughs) you know, bring home the bacon, basically. (laughs) Like my little eight hour a week hobby changed from that to 12 classes a day, six days a week, and the husband doing the stay at home parent role. Mm -hmm. And And it was overwhelming and exhausting, as I'm sure many teachers out there are experiencing still. But I realized there was a ceiling to contracted work that I wasn't ever going to pay the mortgage, (laughs) but even with those that number of classes. So I also started freelancing and some of my students, you know, uh, came to me from other platforms. I didn't poach them. I didn't ask them to come, (laughs) but it built up slowly and by word of mouth that way and referral. And um, one of the things that struck me in, in freelancing was that there was very little curricula out there for freelance teachers, especially purpose built for digital delivery. Um, So it was stressful because I'd come from these contacted roles where I could literally turn on my PC in my pajamas and teach for my 25 minutes, log off and attend to my children again, to having to put in pretty much as much planning and preparation time for every class as actual contact time. And I just didn't have the time for it. So I got to thinking that I surely must not be the only one in this position who wants to replicate that experience of having everything supplied to you from a contractor, but then to do so on a freelance basis. And th- and that's where the sort of cog started turning, Ludo. I realized that there must be a need and set to work. And luckily, my husband did find new work. So I mm-hmm. could decrease my teaching hours and invest those into the planning side. Um, and it's that. So that brings us to about 10 months ago. And then, yeah, and then there's are. another one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, exactly. It is. It's totally um, evolving all the time. And the why at this point is that I love being able to give freedom to other teachers to take that leap. So whatever standing in their way, lack of confidence, lack of actual curriculum, lack of skill and know how with regard to business acumen or the industry. If I can, you know, receive one email a week or a month that says, thank you, Crystal, you know, I wouldn't have done this without you. That is incredible to me and heartwarming and really at this point, a huge why for me. Okay, so (laughs) we know. Yeah. Okay, so that's... uh, that's the interview over then. Thanks, Crystal. No. <laughs> okay, bye. Uh, yeah, okay, bye. No, so you, 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 you've developed something over the last 12 months that perhaps you never saw coming. Um, and, and that has developed into something worldwide. That's developed into something that, that hundreds of users take, um, take, their, take their, their, their learnings from, take their, their motivation, their, their incentives from um, each time they, they, they come to, to conduct a class online. And you mentioned that that you provide a step by step ESL curricula, or that you provide step by step ESL curricula. Can you can you take us through that a little bit further, please? 
Yeah. So what I mean by that is that the lessons are really incremental. So they build little by little on every learning objective. You can see steady progress in your students. You can report on it, which makes your clients happy and they stay with you long term. It also means that everything's built in. So all the exercises, games, songs, assessments, it's all there for you. So like I said before, you can get a feeling for the resources and and my writing style, and then rock up to your computer and teach them with very little planning and preparation. And when I say that you keep your students long term, my ambition for the general curriculum is to be almost 700 lessons long. So I really do mean long term if you're starting a student right from beginner level and keeping them the whole way through. Yeah, that's a really important point, isn't it, for especially those educators out there who want to make a living out of out of what they do which is of course a great sign for for the best educators out there we want them to remain in the profession that long termism is key isn't it that that right. stability you can't just keep jumping from new first session student to new first session student um, as yeah. enjoyable as that can be in fact we had a wonderful question uh, in the uh, qualified student community this month about perhaps it was last month about do you enjoy first sessions with a student? And, and the members were really split. You know, the answers were really split between those who, who loved diving in to new sessions with students. They loved the kind of the whole excitement about that. And those mm-hmm. who said, you know, I, no, I much prefer that long-term uh, relationship building that you get with, with students over, you know, 20, 30 sessions. So um, it, certainly for, a, for, the, for the profession, for remaining within the profession. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's about that long-termism. So that's, that's really important. Yeah. Um, so perhaps that feeds into, into the, the, the bit I wanted to explore next, which was you have built up so many years of, of experience in mm-hmm. this field, in, in online tutoring and ESL tutoring. Can you just give us a quick rundown, Crystal, of your top three tips for online ESL tutors? Sure. I mean, I think you touched on one, Ludo, and that's about the relationships. Everything that you do, whether it's with the students themselves or the parents, should be building relationships, not converting customers. Um, Because the students will always refer you on to their friends and colleagues and acquaintances because they like you and trust you, not because you're giving them some kind of kickback or bonus. So that would be my first tip. Um, My second tip is to perfect your product. So essentially, that's you, (laughs) your delivery, your teaching style. And that's what will keep them coming back and referring you. So it's not enough to sit back on your laurels and do the same thing that you did yesterday, tomorrow. I think it's not maybe readily available. And perhaps this is an area where there needs to be a bit more... um, built up in the industry, but I think that all online teachers should seek out professional development. Um, I'd love to see more of that. And my third is more of a business tip, and that's just to keep your overheads low, especially starting out. There are so many companies out there wanting to sell you something, but you don't necessarily need all the bells and whistles, especially at first. So for example, I'm years now into freelancing, but I still use a simple Excel sheet for my scheduling. I don't, I just don't use those scheduling apps. I'm Mm -hmm. sure they're great, but I give my students the bonus of a guaranteed slot every week um, and they love that. They feel special and it makes my scheduling life a breeze. So why do I need to sort of reinvent the wheel? I think I can see a Excel for tutors workshop coming up, Crystal, (laughs) because (laughs) they are, they're so popular, aren't they? They're scheduling apps Um, and They they come in and eat those subscriptions kind of, you forget about some of those subscriptions and they're only ever kind of eight pounds, eight dollars a month, but right. they build up, don't they? And Excel's free. It is free if you have uh, Microsoft Office, yeah. but you're, you're totally right, Ludo. Like you think, yes, it's only eight pounds for scheduling, but then it's 12 pounds for curriculum and six pounds for this. And, and by the end of it, you're actually investing the equivalent of like a full day's work every month just to, to pay your, all of your, you know, subscriptions. Yeah. And why, you know, all you need is a computer and some lessons and a relationship at the end of the day. 
Absolutely. That's, um, that could be the title of the podcast, perhaps. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all you need is relationships and a computer at the end of the day. And now a word from Diego Mello, CEO of the newly announced lead partners of the Love Tutoring Festival 2, Nudge Education. We are Nudge Education, a movement of like-minded professionals trying to eradicate chronic disengagement from the face of the education sector a child at a time and point every chronically disengaged child towards a life that is worth living. So if you want to find out more, please uh, go to nudgeeducation.co.uk slash work with us and get involved with the movement. So I'd like to turn to an area that has probably affected yourself, Crystal, and many other tutors in in your space, particularly in in the US, um, as as most of the research and the stories have been been kind of uh, describing. How do you think the the recent um, legal changes in China will affect the global um, online tutoring market? Yeah, I mean, I think you're right. They already have. I think we're in the first wave of changes and there are positives and there are negatives. So right now, I think a lot of people are scrambling to find new work. And it's becoming increasingly difficult to do so because all the contracted roles are becoming oversaturated with teachers. So that's quite scary. But I think um, on the positive side, it's an impetus to take that leap. So if your passion is this industry, then you've never, you probably never had the kick in the shorts like this before to get out there and make a go of it and and try for your piece of the the cheese (laughs) I love the idioms um (laughs) yeah so I think that that first wave is turbulent definitely in the longer term what I hope for the industry is that um it does sort of even out that maybe the bar is raised a little bit in terms of who remains so hopefully the only competing factor isn't pay rate that it's also down to skills experience and qualifications um i would love to see more formal international accreditation of certificate certification courses like right now you know any tom dick and harry can put out a tesol course or a devil course and you don't really know the quality of one from another so i'd love to see that more standardized and to have a baseline because ultimately There are a lot of countries out there that regard teachers in very high esteem and a lot of emphasis is placed on preliminary qualifications, but also professional development. And there isn't the same for ESL, even though we are teachers too, and we have to keep that bar high. So striving for excellence, I hope over time is what the China changes kind of set into motion. And that is um, not a paid promo for quality. <laughs> I, I promise. I do promise. Uh, no, but, I think we're in agreement there, though, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's certainly what we are hoping to achieve, what we are looking, seeking to achieve, is, is bringing a, uh, some kind of international yeah, minimum standard regulation, exactly. And, and whether it's a qualified tutor or, or another um, player in the, in the market, it's, it's important that 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 we take advantage of the now international feel of tutoring Mm -hmm. and that we are able to pool the resources and the expertise around the world into, into this kind of um, concept, this kind of minimum global standards in tutoring, a kind of international tutoring body, as it were, perhaps who, who could um, help with the rise of tutoring in, in, in uh, different nations around the world and could help, as you say, with, not only just setting the bar so that you know other that's so that other tutors around the world can strive to to reach that 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 minimum standard but also to simply to support those who want to get into the industry but don't know how um, right. because as you say currently there isn't necessarily a global um, 
qualification or a global standard to turn to if you if yeah. you want to you know um, understand a little bit more about about the profession about the craft so people just go online and start giving lessons and and those lessons then impact upon that educator's future because they may not be at a high standard it impacts upon the parents finances because they may be paying for substandard uh, mm-hmm. teaching and it impacts you know ultimately on the student who may be receiving um you know substandard or, or, or kind of uh, under quality tutoring so yes it is centrally important isn't it um, yeah so so has has have the new changes in china led to increased work uh, in other areas you know across um crystal clear esl across your business have you have you noticed um well i mean because there's a surplus of teachers turning to freelance needing to do so very quickly and inexpensively because, uh, you know, they didn't really have a great deal of notice to save up some some startup costs. Um, I have had a lot of teachers reaching out to me, which has been fantastic. Um, I said earlier that one of my greatest joys is being able to help people in that transition. So in that way, it's great. What has been a challenge is that because the Crystal Clear website functions, you know, well and looks semi-professional if I say so myself people come to me and assume that I'm fully developed you know raring to go and don't realize that I really only have about a I don't know seven month head start to them (laughs) so it's um it's a challenge when they're like I need level five yesterday and I'm like well it's just me I mean I'm I'm going as quick as I can so it's fun and nobody's like rude. And I've made some amazing friends in the process because again, um, I, I try to build relationships with clients and, and have that connection too. It's not just teachers and parents or what have you, but um, that has been probably the biggest challenge with a sort of wave of new freelancers is trying to accommodate the demands. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's where you can can look for for to growth, can't you, um, Crystal? You know, you can look to build out the team who who's able to support you, and, and and I think that's you know once the central mission of of the business of the project is, is has been laid out, then I mean already you can see that from the numbers using your your site. It's, you know, there, yeah. there is a belief in the need for for this, uh, and you're solving problems for for hundreds of people around the world. Hopefully, so. Yeah, I mean, I don't claim to be perfect, and I invite feedback and. Um, I do. I, I have a lot of fun thinking about the future of the company because it's a it's not a role that I've had the luxury of being in before in the creative side. So I'm also very lucky that my husband's job is in business directorates and um, he tends to focus me. So if I kind of get like too engrossed in a pro in a project idea or off track he's like okay we're sticking to this goal you know <laughs> and that's really good because I am driven but I I get excited and sidetracked <laughs> <laughs> that's like all good creatives for those of you who know the love tutoring festival you'll be delighted to hear that we're back From Monday the 24th to Friday the 28th of January 2022, the Love Tutoring Festival will return, bigger and better than ever. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, you're in for a real treat. The most loved festival in tutoring, the Love Tutoring Festival is a five-day online celebration of all things tutoring, with some of the biggest names in tutoring, education and pedagogy, and hundreds of committed and motivated tutors from all four corners of the globe taking part, it really is the biggest party in tutoring. We will again be working on a freemium ticket model this year, with all events totally free, apart from our famous and ludicrously inexpensive CPD accredited workshops. You can find out more, including the confirmed speakers so far, how to grab your place and key information on our wonderful sponsors at qualifiedtutor.org slash love tutoring festival. So, Let's raise standards in tutoring together. Okay, so we've we've set some some visions, we've set some goals. I'd now like to kind of formalize, narrow down this thinking into into, into um, this this topic. 
First of all, what, what would ESL teaching success look like for you in, in 2030? So this would be more like business success for Crystal Clear ESL for me. So I think it goes without saying that I would want the curriculum and the offering, the core offering fully developed. I mean, we're talking almost a decade from now. So that would be all set up. But um, I have hopes to be able to host other developers work because they're currently, as far as what I found are not subscription hosting sites for content that, you know, similar to Teachers Pay Teachers, which is a fantastic site if you want to sell your material, but there isn't similar for subscription. So I'd love to offer that. Um, I really want to reach out into print publications to support what I have created digitally and also perhaps to evolve for other languages. So to maybe start by just having some of the material translated, but I mean, it's probably not possible to go like for like, so to adapt it as well. And also maybe one day to have a team of more than one. (laughs) (laughs) That's what this is. This is a job recruitment podcast. Please (laughs) join in (laughs) Crystal's mission. (laughs) Yeah, no, so big goals for the company. And then, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not currently taking on any more private students because, um, I I have students that I love and that I couldn't imagine giving up, but every spare second that I have is being devoted to the curriculum development for the company right now. So I haven't even sat down to think about where my teaching goals might be in nine, eight or nine years. Okay. Well, that's this afternoon's project. (laughs) (laughs) I'll come back to you on that one. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Well, we'll get you back on the podcast in, yeah, eight or nine years. Okay, (laughs) perfect. (laughs) So, so that's, that's, yeah, that's brilliant. That's, that's a little run through of what's coming next for, for Crystal Weber, for Crystal Clear ESL. Just one, one final word, Crystal, before we kind of wrap up here is, is what, what do you see as the future of, of, online ESL teaching? Where, where can it go? What are the limitless boundaries of, of this field? Um, I think it's going to get bigger and better and more exciting. I'm seeing more gamified lessons, more ways to interact with students like VR. Um, there's lots of AI coming into it. So I think there will inevitably be uh, that side of it to the commiserations of fellow teachers. But um, I definitely think that the, really the sky's the limit and that we haven't even sort of wrapped our brains around what's to come because the industry looks so different than even five years ago. So mm. I think big things. Even 18 months ago. I mean. Yes, <laughs> yeah. true. Yeah. I mean, well, honestly, it's funny you say that, Ludo, because when I started planning, 10 months ago, I was using um, just PowerPoint. And since then, all of these really interactive platforms have come to light that are now available. And it's just really up the ante for what developers like myself can put on the table. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, even the idea, it seems so crazy now to think that, that this would be crazy, given that we spent 18 months doing it. But the idea of you know, hosting a podcast with me based in Berlin and you based in Southampton, yeah. American woman based in Southampton, recording this podcast about an online ESL site. I mean, that seems so obvious now because we've been yeah. doing it. But 18 months ago, that would have been that would have been very strange. It would have been difficult to host. It would have been difficult to record, to prepare, mm-hmm. to develop, to, to publish. You know, it, it's just our lives, yeah, they've been hugely changed, you know, turned upside yeah. down. And, and the next 18 months... Who's to say it won't be even more different? Yeah, Indeed, yep. Okay, so, well, there's your thoughts, listeners, um, to, to, to leave you with um, wherever and whenever you're listening to this. Go and visit um, Crystal's website at esl-curriculum.com. Um, you can find Crystal on, on Facebook as well at Crystal Clear ESL Curricula. Um, those are the two spots you can go. If you've got any feedback from this episode or if you'd like to drop um, Crystal a question, um, just go to speakpipe.com slash qualified tutor podcast. You can leave any kind of audio message, feedback, answer to a question there. And next week, we will be interviewing the uh, CEO of The Profs, who will be sponsoring day two at the Love Tutoring Festival 2 this coming January. Um, 
And that man is Richard Evans. So if you would like to have your questions, um, sorry, your answers to the questions that we're asking Richard answered uh, and included at the end of next week's podcast, these are the questions for next week that we'll be asking Richard. Uh, Will top tutors ever reach the status that lawyers or doctors have in society? What top three tips do you have for tutors in 2021? And what are you most looking forward to at Love Tutoring Festival 2? So those are the three questions that you can go ahead, have a go at answering on speakpipe.com slash qualified tutor podcast. And the best answers will be played at the end of next week's episode. So thank you very, very much for listening. Thank you very much, Crystal. Thanks for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's been a wonderful 25 minutes of of journey through uh, Crystal Clear ESL, your business, and through the ESL area in general. Um, I hope we have convinced um, as many tutors as we can to to join in the English as a second language, English as a foreign language world, because it's a really vibrant and international sphere, Um, uh, even if we've just convinced one, and that'll do for today. So thank you very much, everyone. We'll see you next time where we're chatting to Richard Evans. Uh, And as ever, I've been your host, Ludo Miller. Cheerio. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Qualified Tutor Podcast. Whether you're a regular listener of this podcast or you've just stumbled across it, join the Qualified Tutor Podcast group within the Qualified Tutor community to stay up to date with our latest news, offers, workshops, and of course, simply to meet other tutors like you. Whatever your level as a tutor, our training courses will be the next step in your professional development. Visit qualifiedtutor.org slash training to find out more about our CPD accredited and Ofqual recognised courses, the first of their kind in the tutoring industry. Your student deserves the best tutor possible. Make that happen today by joining Qualified Tutor.